In January 1982, Brian Fargo, Tori Worrell, Jay Patel, and Rebecca Heinemann founded Interplay Entertainment, a game development studio based out of Los Angeles, California. Over the next six years, they would grow their team and work on a variety of games, slowly building their portfolio. But it was Wasteland, released in 1988, that paved the way for Fallout. In many respects, Wasteland could be viewed as a spiritual predecessor to Fallout, with both games taking place in a post-nuclear war United States, both having attributes used to customize the playable character and making player choice a big part of how the game is played. After Wasteland's warm reception, Interplay was ready to strike while the iron was hot and make a sequel. Unfortunately, Electronic Arts, the publishers of Wasteland, weren't having it. So, Interplay just created their own post-apocalyptic RPG. Their game was going to use the core ideas of the generic universal role-playing system, previously used in tabletop games like Dungeons & Dragons. As development started, the owners of GURPS became cautious because of how violent Interplay's game, entitled Vault 13, had become. They reneged on the deal, forcing Interplay to create the special system for Vault 13, despite Tim Kaine, a producer and programmer at Interplay, having already spent months working on the game based around GURPS. After a few years of work, and Vault 13 almost being cancelled a few times, it was released on September 30th, 1997, under a new name, Fallout, a post-nuclear role-playing game. Fallout's gameplay is rather traditional of the time. It's an isometric, turn-based fare, with you having direct control over your character. You use the Pip-Boy 2000 to manage your inventory, check skills, and read about quests, instead of relying on a several hundred page book, like what was included with Wasteland. Fallout basically takes the clutter of a tabletop RPG and condenses it down into a clean user interface. In Fallout, you play as the Vault Dweller, a former inhabitant of Vault 13, who was sent into the Wasteland to find a new water chip for your vault, meeting allies and slaughtering mutants along the way. Eventually, you start encountering giant human-like mutants called Super Mutants. These are people who have been exposed to a virus known as FEV at the behest of the Master, the Super Mutants' leader. The task of defeating the Master falls on you. You can convince him to abandon his plans, kill him outright, or take his side, which ends with you being dunked into a tank of FEV as mutants raid your vault. That technically ends the game, but it's important that the game lets you choose to do it, rather than just telling you that the game will end and you'll die if you side with the master. Many viewed Fallout as one of the best games of the year, and one of the best RPGs in several years. Despite that, it didn't sell particularly well. To that end, Interplay was quick to get to work on a sequel, but they also wanted to start work on new games, with licenses that they recently acquired. Black Isle Studios, a division within Interplay to work on Fallout 2, was born. Fallout 2 didn't have much development time, releasing one year to the day after Fallout 1. Its development was rushed, lacked the teamwork one would expect, and even had key members of the team leave to form new studios. It did not go well. Luckily, Fallout 2 was built on the original's engine, just expanding on it in every conceivable way. There were more weapons, more NPCs to talk to, more quests, more locations including some from the first game, many more cultural references, and more things to justify its M rating, like slavery, prostitution, and cannibalism. Fallout 2 takes place after the events of the first game. The exiled Vault Dweller formed a new community called Arroyo, where he raised his family before vanishing into the wasteland. You are the Chosen One, his grandchild. You are tasked with finding a Garden of Eden creation kit to save your village from the worst drought in its history. After you leave, members of Arroyo, as well as those left within Vault 13, are captured by the Enclave, remnants of the United States federal government. You track the Enclave to their base on an oil rig, kill the president, blow up the base, and leave with the Garden of Eden creation kit and save the day. Because of Fallout 2's rushed development, the game was plagued with bugs, glitches, and a multitude of other issues. Few of them were actually game-breaking, but they were common enough to be an annoyance to most players throughout a playthrough of the game. However, the bugs didn't stop Fallout 2 from being more successful than its predecessor in almost every way, selling more copies and generally being seen as the better game. Following the success of Fallout 2, Black Isle Studios was ready to try something new, but Interplay wanted another Fallout title to be released. So, they contacted Micro Forte Studios to develop their next game, a more tactical and strategic take on Fallout. Fallout Tactics Brotherhood of Steel 
had a much deeper level of control compared to other games. A new engine allowed players to control not only their own character, but every character in their squad. Tactics also had a multiplayer component that let players put together a squad of their choosing and do battle against other players. If you were so inclined, you would have a squad of Deathclaws, Ghouls, and Super Mutants. Tactics takes place sometime between Fallout 1 and Fallout 2, with you playing as an initiate in the Brotherhood of Steel splinter group Midwest Brotherhood of Steel. You and your squad, along with the rest of the Midwest Brotherhood, are searching for Vault Zero, a sort of headquarters for Vault Tech that contains a vast amount of advanced technology and brain power. As you journey towards Vault Zero, you pass through numerous Midwestern cities like Chicago, Kansas City, and eventually arrive at the Cheyenne Mountains, where Vault Zero is located, all the while fighting hordes of robots. The robots were created by the Calculator, a being created after a failed experiment to fuse man with machine inside Vault Zero. You can deal with the Calculator a number of ways, depending on who is in your squad and what actions you took throughout the game. The biggest problem with Tactics was that it was not the sequel to Fallout 2 many were hoping for. It was a squad-based strategy game with light RPG elements, not a full-fledged RPG like the first two games were. It put more focus on combat and less on creating a vast open world to explore. There aren't many choices to make, as the game is fairly linear. Reviewers though gave it good scores, mostly 8 out of 10s. It wasn't amazing, but it wasn't bad either. Interplay, now owned by Titus Interactive, were told to get into the console gaming market, a place they'd never done particularly well. Black Isle Studios had recently published Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, a hack and slash game for the PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Interplay's next title, Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, would utilize Dark Alliance's engine, just with a few modifications to allow for long-range combat with firearms, and some general tweaks to combat overall. Skills were changed into perks, allowing you to get stat increases to various things, like getting more caps when selling items, for example. Brotherhood of Steel takes place in 2208 in Carbon, Texas, with you playing as a new Brotherhood of Steel initiate, who helps in a search for missing Brotherhood Paladins. You eventually meet up with the Vault Dweller from Fallout 1, who can actually become a playable character. He directs you to Los Angeles. Your search leads you to a vault where a super mutant knocks you out while entering. The remaining humans in the vault come to your aid and help you defeat the super mutant leader. You start the self-destruct sequence of the vault and escape via a monorail to end the game. To say that Brotherhood of Steel is the black sheep of the Fallout franchise would not be wrong. Reviewers said that the gameplay was repetitive and the amount of cursing was over the top, even for a Fallout game. The vastly different type of game it was, and the fact that it wasn't a very good game at that, meant that it didn't appeal to many gamers. Fallout fans wanted an RPG, and there were better console hack and slash titles out there. It flopped. After the failure that was Brotherhood of Steel, Interplay slowly started to crumble. None of their games sold that well. In an attempt to stay afloat, they licensed Fallout to a well-known RPG developer based out of Maryland, Bethesda Softworks. Not long after, they sold the rights to Fallout to Bethesda. Part of the deal stated that Interplay could continue working on their latest Fallout project, a Fallout MMO. Unbeknownst to them, they couldn't actually use any of the previously established lore from Fallout. It could be a Fallout MMO literally in name alone. Fallout Online was never released. Bethesda, after the launch of Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, began working with their new IP. They modified the Gamebryo engine from Oblivion to make it work with FPS mechanics and a different leveling system. Bethesda were fans of the turn-based aspects of the first two Fallouts, so they implemented VATS to allow players to freeze the game and target a specific part of an enemy to attack. The success of those attacks were based on the skills of the player. Special also returned in a relatively unchanged fashion. Fallout 3 is set in 2277, 200 years after the Great War. You are a Vault Dweller in Vault 101, located in the ruins of Washington, D.C. Your father escapes the vault, leaving chaos in his wake for you to deal with. You track him across the capital wasteland, carving your own path in the process. He wanted to start working on Project Purity again, a project that would cleanse vast amounts of water for the entire capital wasteland. After the Enclave disrupts the project, your father sacrifices himself to save you and the project. After finding a Garden of Eden creation kit, you, with help from the Brotherhood of Steel, begin assaulting the Jefferson Memorial, where the project is located. The Enclave is beaten back, and you must decide who will activate the purifier, because they will die in the process. Regardless of who does it, the game ends, with the Capital Wasteland now having a source of clean water.
With the release of Fallout 3, Fallout fans finally had a sequel to Fallout 2 worthy of the Fallout name. No spin-offs, just the game fans had been waiting for. Not only did Fallout 3 breathe new life into the franchise, it breathed new life into the entire RPG genre as a whole, topping charts the year it was released, and even today still being viewed as one of the best RPGs of all time. Fallout 3 sold far more than every other Fallout game up until that point combined, selling over 4 million copies by the end of October 2008 alone. Fallout was back. Fallout 3 was a massive success, but Bethesda was anxious to get back to their other RPG series, The Elder Scrolls. As Interplay was losing the custody battle for their post-apocalyptic baby, members of Black Isle Studios were leaving and forming a new studio, Obsidian Entertainment. They had relative success with other games, like Alpha Protocol and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords, so Bethesda contacted them to begin work on a new Fallout game. And with the backing of a huge studio like Bethesda, they could finally create the Fallout title they always wanted to make. They took aspects of their previously cancelled Fallout 3, codenamed Van Buren, and used them in their new, western set game. Things like Caesar's Legion, the New California Republic, and the Greater Las Vegas area were finally going to be implemented into a Fallout game. Fallout New Vegas had arrived. New Vegas is very much the Fallout 2 to Fallout 3's Fallout 1, and that it took what the previous game had established and just added onto it in many ways. More weapons, more ways to change skills, thanks to the return of traits, weapon modifications like suppressors, extended magazines, and scopes, and a revamped way to interact with companions. New Vegas took what many fans complained about from Fallout 3 and made it better. In Fallout New Vegas, you are the courier, a courier unlucky enough to have the wrong package at the wrong time, leading to you being shot in the head and left for dead before the game starts. Your task is simple, track down the man who tried to kill you. As you uncover clues about his whereabouts, you become a key player in an upcoming war for the Mojave Wasteland between Caesar's Legion and the New California Republic. You can side with either of them, or the proprietor of New Vegas himself, Mr. House, whose platinum chip you were actually carrying, leading to your attempted murder. Or, you can seize New Vegas for yourself, with the help of an ass-kissing and sometimes sarcastic Securitron named Yes Man. New Vegas is much more open-ended than Fallout 3. Who you side with and how you deal with the various factions you will encounter are mostly left up to you. Finally, the battle for the Mojave Wasteland arrives, and you, along with the factions you've encountered, fight against Caesar's Legion or the New California Republic at the Hoover Dam and take back the Mojave Wasteland for yourself. Just like Fallout 2, New Vegas was largely viewed as an upgrade over Fallout 3 in every way. The combat was beefed up just enough to make it more interesting. Quests, both main and side quests, had more ways to solve them and allowed you to truly make your own choices. That said, on the technical side, New Vegas used the same engine as Fallout 3 which wasn't exactly a graphical masterpiece when it launched. New Vegas looked rough, characters were dull and unrealistic, but that didn't stop New Vegas from selling just as well as its predecessor, selling over 5 million copies in its first month alone. Not long after the release of Fallout 3, Bethesda's Todd Howard expressed interest in getting into the mobile gaming scene. Once work on Skyrim finished, Bethesda began production on two new Fallout games, one being a mobile game. Fallout Shelter was unveiled at Bethesda's 2015 E3 showcase. In it, you are the overseer of your very own vault. You control who comes in, what they wear, what their names are, what their jobs are, and who and when they f Unfortunately, one of the key aspects of a vault is its experimentation, which you can't do in your vault. Your job is simply to keep your vault running smoothly and keep your dwellers as happy as possible by assigning them to the correct room. Each dweller has their own special stats, and different rooms utilize different stats. A power generator room uses strength, so a dweller with high strength will be happier in the power generator than they would be in the med bay. You can also send dwellers out to explore the wasteland, armed with weapons, armor, and even a pet, or you can send them out on quests to look for loot. Fallout Shelter was praised for being free, not needing an internet connection to play it, and not having obvious paywalls. Still, it did, and still does, have loot boxes that can be purchased with real money, something many gamers detest. The other game Bethesda began working on was their official sequel to Fallout 3. Beginning shortly after Fallout 3 launched, leaks and rumors began to spread about what Fallout 4 could possibly be. Some leaks were official-looking documents, while others were mysterious countdowns that appeared to be from Bethesda, but were nothing but speed bumps in the Fallout 4 hype train's tracks. On June 3rd, 2015, Bethesda unveiled Fallout 4 to the world, but something was different. 
Aside from utilizing the engine from Skyrim, which made a much better looking game, the player character, for the first time, actually spoke. Fallout 4 had a voiced protagonist. In addition to that monumental change, the skill system was revamped, removing skills altogether in favor of perks that offered flat bonuses to a particular skill. A settlement building mechanic was also introduced, allowing players to create and maintain their own community within the game. And weapons and armor were now much, much more customizable, thanks to every item in the game being scrappable for parts, which are used to create modifications for weapons and armor. A simple pipe pistol could be transformed into a high-powered sniper rifle or a fully automatic assault rifle with a massive magazine. Fallout 4's story is something of a reversal to Fallout 3's story. Instead of looking for your father, you're looking for your son, who was taken from you after a man killed your spouse inside Vault 111, where you managed to escape to just in time as the Great War began. You traverse the Boston area, hitting up local landmarks and cities, asking anyone who might know anything about your son, Sean. A synth in the baseball stadium turned city of Diamond City helps you track down the man who killed your wife or husband, who is now bunkered down inside a former US military base. The Brotherhood of Steel arrive in the Commonwealth, you take a chip that was in the brain of the man who killed your spouse and take it to the memory den, where you relive some of his memories. You can enlist the help of a few different groups to gain entrance into the Institute, where your son was taken. The factions are all sort of feuding with each other in one way or another. Sean was taken by the Institute to further synth research, and was a key part of the Institute becoming as powerful as they have. From there, you must decide who you'll side with, the Brotherhood of Steel, the Railroad, the Minutemen, or the Institute. Either way, you'll take out some or all of the other factions, reclaiming the wasteland in the name of your chosen faction. Upon release, many gamers were skeptical of how a voice protagonist would impact the game. To more people than Bethesda was likely hoping for, the voice protagonist was a big criticism of Fallout 4. Instead of playing as your own character, you played as the character Bethesda wanted you to play as. Regardless of what choices you made, your character sounded the way Bethesda wanted them to sound. That, coupled with the more restrictive skill system, made a lot of Fallout fans see Fallout 4 as a step in the wrong direction. It wasn't all bad though, as the vast world Bethesda created was loved by most, along with a new level of customization for weapons and armor. Your character might not be your own, but your guns certainly would be. In February 2017, Pete Hines said in an interview that Fallout 4 had surpassed Skyrim as Bethesda's most successful game of all time. Thank you for watching this video, it has been a brief history of Fallout. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Leave a comment saying what your favorite Fallout game is, because I'd be interested in knowing what everyone's are. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul Love Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.